Sorry I'm late everyone, I was, oh you know, busy doing stuff. But as for today's video, we are looking at the less flat versions of 2D Mario. 3D, if you will. Anyone see me just jump out of that painting? Yes, we are putting every single 3D Mario game against each other and ranking them from worst to best. Yeah, that's about it. Pretty straightforward concept. I'll just say that the games we are looking at today are arguably some of the best Mario games ever, so the stakes are really high. Let's not waste any more time and just get into the video. Yeah, that painting was starting to give me weird vibes. Anyways, seven contenders, seven awesome games, but only one seven place spot. None of these contestants want to be in that place, but it does have to go to Super Mario 3D Land. Yep, we are starting off here with no surprises because Mario 3D Land is last on the list. There'll be surprises later. Don't worry. This game was the very first original 3D Mario game on handheld, and it did that job very well. Unfortunately, that's about all it did. Sure, it was fun, bright, and full of interesting levels, but it was easily the most safe and least innovative 3D Mario game. That's pretty much its biggest downfall. But as for what it did right, it still offered some of the most unique platforming challenges on the 3DS. Take these red-blue platforms, for example. While Galaxy 2 technically introduced them, 3D Land changed how they work in a totally different way. In Galaxy 2, they would flip every time you did a shake, but now they flip every time you do a jump. Whoa! Okay, you might see this as a minor thing, but by changing this, you almost have to think in reverse, because now you have to jump to the part of the platform that's not there. Twisting your brain in different dimensions. Yeah, this game does that. This game's probably like the only 3DS game that uses 3D well. It lets you solve certain perspective puzzle rooms as well as giving you some cool depth effects for a bunch of vertical themed levels in this game. All in all, it had its own unique little charm to it. Great controls considering you're using the circle pad and very solid levels. The next game that we have here is known as Better 3D Land also known as Mario 3D World. This game basically took the handheld roots of 3D Land, expanded and added to it to make a better home console version. It kind of had like an on and off carnival theme going for it, and the carnival levels are the ones that stuck out for me. Look, Bowser's even head of the big top by the end of the game. You can swing on circus ropes and fight in big tents. It's a cool setting you don't really see in video games, okay? Either that or I secretly want to be head of a circus. Top 10 carnival levels, anybody? No? Okay. In this game, I've always liked those green star box challenges. You know the ones. Jump into a box, then it gives you a scenario where you have a limited amount of time to get the star before poof, everything goes away. They're like WarioWare fused with a Mario scenario. They even made giant levels that are just a bunch of these challenges one after another. Well, damn, now it's exactly like WarioWare and they can get pretty challenging too. Plus in this game, you can play as five unique characters that all play and control differently. That's pretty cool for a 3D Mario game. However, one of the biggest things in these two games that hold them back for me is just how the characters feel when controlling them. I don't know, it just seems hard to build up momentum and speed on your character. And that makes it just not as fun or rewarding to optimize this game and go through the levels. On top of that, they're just the least original in the series, and more importantly, they have some serious competition to face off against. Let's look at the competitors. Now we've had our appetizers, so let's move on to the meat and potatoes of this ranking. The best of the best, top tier of top tier Mario games. The game to start us off is Super Mario Galaxy 2. Yes, a sequel. Took what the original Mario Galaxy had started and just made more of it. More stars, more power-ups, more characters, more, uh, well, motion controls, and most importantly, more galaxies. Maybe even too many galaxies. This game's just a sensory overload. Just when you're getting used to one galaxy and the ideas in that setting, you move on to the next place. This game had some of the coolest power-ups that I had seen in any Mario game. Cloud Suit Mario had awesome physics because now you're super floaty. I mean, yeah, okay, what'd you expect? But now you can create clouds as platforms. And then there's the Rock Suit. Yeah, you wish. This type of Rock Suit. And with this suit, you can go bowling with your face. It's awesome. Then there's Yoshi in this game who's kind of like a power-up himself, and he's got his own set of power-ups that he can use. So it's like one big power-upception in this game. And well, yes, this game is still very good, 
there's a few reasons why I like this one less than the original Galaxy. The main thing is that overall it just felt less original. Not even because it wasn't the first Galaxy game, but it just seemed to borrow from other games as well. Also, I just didn't like the atmosphere as much. There were way too many cloud levels and not enough space themed ones. I mean, just look at the covers. That just took me out of the game a bit. But that all being said, this is still one very fantastic Mario game. You know, I think I've been inside for just a bit too long at this point. So, if you could excuse me, I'm just gonna go out for a bit, grab some fresh air and some... ...sunshine. Super Mario Sunshine. Not your typical Mario game. This time around, the main villain is, uh, Evil Mario. Yeah, sure. You gotta understand, it was the early 2000s. Everyone and their mother had an evil twin back then. This game's really weird, eh? Anyone, anyone ever point this out? Even from a series where the norm is being an Italian guy that stomps on mushrooms, breaks bricks with his fist, and shoots fireballs. Because this time, you're on an island of dudes with trees growing out their head, this is the only 3D Mario game without traditional enemies like Goombas or Koopas, you're on top of a giant sand block thing that are supposedly birds and I don't even know what's going on anymore, but I love it! The uniqueness and the weirdness just made it stand out over a lot of other Mario games. Take the location for example. This time around you are thrown on this tropical island. This is probably like the only Mario game that uses a universal location setting like this because every area in this game fits this theme. You'll be exploring picture perfect vacation spots throughout the island, all with fantastic looking water I must say. I don't know what they used in the GameCube to power this kind of water, but they made it look great. I absolutely love the controls in this game. Some of the most fluid and smooth controls in any Mario game, honestly. And of course, we got this flood thing on your back that enhances your platforming more and you can shoot water now. Also, some of my favorite parts in this game, ironically enough, were the parts where you had your flood taken away from you and you had these platforming challenges. No context, no explanation, just blocks in space. That's all you need in life. Well, the games are starting to run out and we are getting closer to that number one spot. So for the third best Mario game, I'd have to go with the original Galaxy. One of my favorite things in this game is the atmosphere. Or a uh, lack there of it, I should say. Okay, two seconds in, I already did a space joke. It feels like you're in mysterious, unknown territories to the characters, quite literally traveling to the edges of the Mario universe. To add to that, you don't even know how you got here, you just woke up beside a bunny. Then there's the Lumas, Rosalina, this whole mysterious galactic space station that acted as an awesome hub world. And they use the space concept to its fullest, introducing spherical planets that you can now move left, right, up, down, any which way your heart desires. Yeah, it was pretty neat, I thought. Also, there is a clever and gorgeous way that you move between all these planets, and it's by using launch stars. Which would be the coolest thing to exist if it was real. Hey, Elon! Invent this, please! The galaxies, though, are what stuck out to me the most. Every single location was original and full of brand new ideas that never overstay or understay their welcome. Take Freeze Flame Galaxy, for example. The first mission has you explore some icy planets while being introduced to the ice flower. The next mission has you blast to the core of a sun while being introduced to the fire flower. The third and final mission has both fire and ice used in one level together, crossing over the elements. And then boom, you're done with that galaxy and you move on to the next three star galaxy. And it's amazing too. Hey, I announced the games around here. <clears throat> Super Mario Odyssey. Where to even begin with this one? So uh, Mario goes to New York, then fights an oddly realistic dragon, and finishes with a low poly suit world. Alright, the only thing that's consistent about this game is the inconsistency, but that's what makes this game great and unique. So many different types of gameplay, so many different art styles, and so many different characters that you can control. And now Mario can use his hat thingy in a bunch of new ways as well. Use it as another platform to enhance your jumps. Throw it so it orbits around yourself like a hat boomerang, or even just take out enemies with this thing. Jeez, they should have called this game Mario Odd Job. All of the different kingdoms in this game are unique with their own unique gameplay styles. 
You got this Mexican desert level where it's just a small town in the middle and then a giant desert for you to explore and move around in. Then to contrast that, you got this New York City where there's a lot of vertical platforming and everything's condensed. And a lot of the moons here are from other mini games, so it's like you're doing side quests in a Mario game. And then we got this snow world where you first realize that you should have wore a toque, but you are wondering where everyone is just to find out that everyone is polar bears that live underground and compete in bouncy ball races with their bodies. What? And as for content in this game, yeah, it's got a lot of it. More than any other Mario game on this list, in fact. Most other Mario games have 120 stars. Mario Odyssey, 999 stars. Moons. Shit. Moons. They got moons. Like, I can't even fathom how you put that much work and effort into one single Mario game. You can play this awesome experience for so long, but there is still one game I like a bit more. It's me, Mario! Now we have Mario 64. You probably didn't expect this one. Well, you probably did through process of elimination after revealing Odyssey, but like initially when clicking the video, that's what I'm getting at. While this game isn't as polished, looks as good, or has as much to do in Odyssey, Odyssey is probably the better game in fact. I just like this game, man. Just give me that. I like this game too much in fact, like by an unhealthy amount. Even its shortcomings are fun, like the glitches and exploits. You can move so fast by just optimizing the movement and momentum. It wasn't as polished, making it possible to completely mess up the momentum and how fast the developers intended you to go. It's just fun to play this game really fast. And apparently I'm not the only one who thinks so because this game has one of the biggest speedrunning communities. Look at this guy, he beat it in an hour and 38 minutes. Here I was going all the way around the mountain when I could have just done this. The secrets were so awesome. Call me biased, but they don't put secrets in like they used to. Like sure, there's hidden moons in Odyssey, but when was the last time you were exploring the basement of Peach's castle chasing bunnies, and while you were chasing them, you dove and missed a bunny and hit a wall, but then the wall did a whooshy ripple, but walls aren't supposed to do whooshy ripple, the painters are supposed to do that, so you try and jump into the wall, but it's not a wall, but you find out it's actually a secret desert world. Okay, I'm done. The level themes were imaginative and unique. The platforming challenges were well thought out and I really like how this game didn't hold your hand either. Kinda like Breath of the Wild, it just threw you into these different painting levels with no other directions other than to find a star, and only providing small hints as to where it is. This made finding and discovering things so much more enjoyable and rewarding, especially finding a subworld in the game, like damn! It would get you to question how big this game really was or what else there was left to find. I could talk about this game for a while, maybe I'll do a specific video on it, but for now, I'll leave it at, I really like this game. Thanks for sticking around this long and watching this, Mario 64 is a good game, you should go play it, and this is the end of the video. Three most obvious statements in the world, see you guys later.